And after the presentation... Sponsored by CompuTeach. Your future in safe hands. Welcome to the highlights of the NatWest Trophy final played at Lord's Day in lovely sunshine in front of a capacity crowd. Hampshire versus Surrey. Hampshire had never been to Lord's before in a 60 over final. Surrey had been three times there and they had won once. Well, let's take a look at the teams. There you see the Hampshire side without Mark Nicholas. Rather sad that an injured hand kept him out of the match. Broken knuckle. David Goward assumed the captaincy and two spinners in that side. Rajesh Maru and Sean Udall. And Surrey, Ian Gregg, in his last days of captaincy, leads his side onto the field. And Wacker Eunice is the man that everyone has to pay attention to. The fastest bowler, they say, in the world. Certainly a great destroyer. Well, let's join these Surrey innings after David Gower had won the toss and put Surrey into bat. They made a slow start, but will join in the fifth over, score five for no wicket and Akib Javid is bowling to John Robinson. It seemed to me that uh, got him in the side of the helmet. It uh, certainly didn't get up very much, not as much as a couple of other short ones Akib Javid has bowled. It doesn't seem to me as if he gets down quick enough, really. He gets halfway down, then he sort of freezes a bit and then turns his head away. Well, he'll need a rest. It seems to be the, the thing the physio had uh, a good look at his eyes. A bit shaky, he can come back and uh, bat later on. Uh, Alex Stewart comes out to take the place of uh, Jonathan Robinson. Interesting to see if the man second last on the list there gets any short stuff when he comes out. Wakai Yunus. Well, misfield. Only before runs. First boundary of the morning. Shot and Bicknell really is having a, a cracking season. He's got well over 1,500 first-class runs, and uh, that shot shows why. Ailing the bowler coming on at the nursery end, so David Gower still persisting with uh, seam. Well, that's good fielding. Well, Gar conceded the first boundary with a misfield, but he saved one there. Yes, he's uh, getting a little bit older, there, David Gow, these days, but he's still pretty athletic. He's always been a good field around about there. Oh, got him. Now then, frustration and persistence from the Hampshire bowlers has worked. The first wicket, and that's Bicknell, and he's gone for 13, and 25 for one. Yes, I think there's no doubt there that Bicknell was getting a bit frustrated, he's getting tied down. The ball's not coming to the bat, he's had great difficulty in uh, pacing the field. David Gow has realised that, he's had seven men saving one, and making it very hard for him to get the ball away. And John Ayling a little bit slower than the other two, making it even more difficult. Just hitting across the line. It wasn't a bad delivery, it just went into him a little. Just down the hill a little and uh, pretty good ball. But frustration was the name of the game there. Now, second bowling change, and this is interesting because instead of a spinner, it's Kevin James.
Paul Terry was the fielder there at cover, and uh, really no run on at all for Alex Stewart. It was a, a very bold attempt to pinch, pinch a single. Well, Alex Stewart is the senior batsman for Surrey. He's next year's captain. I think it's going to take a view of what Surrey are going to do about this situation. In the 20th over, they've hardly scored a run, and I think they've got to make a policy about the Hampshire bowling. Well, that helps a bit. It was a short ball, and properly pulled away. Beautiful shot over this very close infield. on the fielding and again of course no slip fielders couldn't say it was a great shot but it was a safe shot as it happened and a misfield which Hampshire can't afford runs really at a premium here well he dropped it short again it was a, another poor ball but this time oh another misfield incredible misfielding by Hampshire and this could well lose in the match Slow ball, but it was picked up beautifully by Thorpe. Stroked the way through extra cover. So that brought the 50 up, 51 for one now. So we are seeing this change to spin now. Rajesh Maru has had a very successful NatWest tournament. An unusual straight. Very profitable as well. An idea that on the replay it'll look very strange. Yes, it was well outside leg stump. Not a good delivery, but he played with a very straight bat. It's going to be Udell the ball from the pavilion end. Very good stroke. Udal just straying a fraction towards leg stump. A lovely shot from Thorpe. Looks like one more over before lunch. Lunch at 12.45 here at Lord's. century here in the test match against Sri Lanka and now a half century in the NatWest final. Sensible shot this by Graham Thorpe. Anything wide of off stump, have a doubt at it, try and get some wood on it. Tell you that was an absolutely cracking stroke. Didn't seem to be all that short. Quite time that, but it's going to run down the hill and into the rope. Now, Akib Chavid is giving him a long, hard look. Also searching for the captain's eye. He's found that. Will he get a field change? Plenty of options there for David Gower. Can switch his medium paces. He still has overs to spare with the spinners, or. He wants just to bowl Udell for one over. He can do it now to bring him up. To use up the 12th over of spin. Six from Maru, six from Udell, who is off. 
Well, it looks to me as if Graham Thorpe made up his mind to play this shot before the bowler had let the ball go. That's a good straight. 50 for Graham Thorpe, 100 partnership between him and Alex Stewart. It's a good player. Only has the wicket to fall, bowled Bicknell for 13. Very good leg cutter. But, uh, came back at the left-hander. Hit leg stump. Success indeed for John Ailing. But a fine innings by Alex Stewart. 61 runs he scored. Same wicket for John Ailing. He's bowled pretty well. Just a slight inside edge there. Onto the leg and middle stump. But he's bowled well, steadily. Just moved it a little bit off the seam. Stewart just trying to hit through a ball of good length. So we're in the 47th over of 60. And sorry, let me remind you. We're put into bat by David Guy, the Hampshire captain today. intelligent bowling there, there's no need to push the ball through in fact on a slow pitch the quicker you push it through the faster the runs come and you lose your line as Sean Udall does then <laughs> Kevin James The 150 comes up now. 151 for two in the 49th over. That's a good slow ball. I'm not sure whether John Ailing saw him coming or expected him to come. This is well bowled. He completely deceived. Uh, Ward got the timing wrong. The ball actually swung a little bit both ways. It went out when it passed the batsman, then went back before it got to the keeper there. <laughs> Kevin James began really impressively, but he bowled three maidens his first three overs, and then seven overs, naught for 14. So it's all very much under control as far as he's concerned. Great piece of cricket, super shot from Thorpe, and what a wonderful piece of fielding. That was Robin Smith at his best. That's the 50 partnership. Garvid back into the attack. Making room there, that was a no ball called, and uh, well before it is. And suddenly Graham Thorpe is playing a major innings and one of great improvisation. That brings up the 200. Just look at the footwork here, withdrawing to start with. Even though the bowler tried to follow him leg side, still a perfectly executed flick away. Five overs to go, and David Gow will hope that Cardigan Connor will bowl three of them. Kevin James, wicket for Cardin and Connor, and the end of a stand which really has done a lot for the cause of Surrey.
That's the end of a super innings caught by Kevin James off Connor for 93. 203 for three in the 56th. Well, Cardiff and Connor deserved a wicket. Some of his balls earlier in the innings with the new ball, but to be honest, it's a shame that Graham Thorpe didn't get a hundred. He's played absolutely beautifully for that 93. It's been a pleasure to watch him. On not an easy surface either. A lot of balls keeping low, the ball not always coming onto the bat, and he's played absolutely splendidly. Monty Lynch, and uh, no better striker in county cricket than this man, and uh, just about the sort of stroke player you'd like with just four or five overs to go. Good shot. Shot because he made room. Yes, he not only made room though, but he looked to place the ball, didn't try and hit it too hard, just nicely eased it over extra cover. Lovely cricket shot, this. Garvid paid the penalty for a short length delivery as well as a wide one. There he is, trying to pitch it up, and uh, just as destructive if it's a full toss. Again, as Jeffrey Broadcott said off the ball before, it wasn't just the power of the shot, it was the placement of it. Yeah, this is good cricket, not trying to slug the ball in these final overs, just placing the ball, timing it perfectly, and it'll go to the boundary, because no matter how hard you hit it, you only get four runs. It's his fifth boundary, and he gets a little applause from his partner, Monday Lynch, never mind the crowd. Well, there's nothing wrong with the idea from the bowler, Akujava, trying to get the leg stump Yorker in, but watch the batsman, he just gets outside leg stump and slices it away with an open face of the bat. On stage, it looked as though Hampshire might restrict Surrey to round about this sort of score, but... Another 20 or 30 runs there to be had if uh, things go right for the batting side. And out, and that's the best way of restricting the run rate. Look at the smile on Cardigan Connor's face. The fine innings there. Ward out for 43, 2-2-2 two, two, two for 4. Well, David Ward is nothing to be too disappointed about. He's played his part, scoring runs with uh, orthodox cricket shots. He's moving away to leg again. It slices off the face. He's trying to play over the point man, but it doesn't clear him. A nice simple catch and uh, another winning for Cardiff and Connor. That brings to the wicket new batsman Ian Gregg. Park Kitchen looks long and hard at that, and in the end, kept his head down. stuff for Hampshire they've conceded only four runs off the last 11 deliveries and with a welter of boundaries that preceded that that's really tilted it slightly back towards them again this was a tremendously hard hit shot but what a piece of fielding oh. best place to put them bowler looks aggrieved but he needn't be
Well, it's cleverly balled by Cardigan Connor. The slower legs, leg break, and he's very unlucky that the outside edge flies past the keeper and runs so quickly down to the nursery end that third man can't stop it going for four runs. Yes, the wicket keeper standing up to Connor, which he didn't do earlier in the innings, it's to stop the batsman giving him the charge. Beautifully caught. That's the end of Lynch. Jonathan Ayling takes the catch and Connor picks up another wicket. 233 for five. Well, it's been a bit of a struggle for Monty Lynch, really. He's hitting out, cross bat shot at this stage of the innings. The catch is well taken, he's judging it, judging it, and it's really low down by his kneecaps, and he really takes that very well indeed. Robinson on three, Greg on seven. Robinson on strike. Wicketkeeper's been brought up to the stumps. That'll just be the single. That is the end of the innings. And in good round figures off 60 overs, 240 a run rate of four runs per over throughout the innings. It was a slow start, in fact, for Surrey, but two excellent partnerships in the middle. Stewart and Thorpe put on 114 excellent runs, and Thorpe and Ward. 64 but again they lost the impetus and it was rather slow towards the end 240 for five and the bowling of hampshire was uh, in many ways outstanding connor coming back with three wickets for 39 and john ailing i thought superb bowling against the best batsman 12 overs two for 39 and so when it came hampshire's time to bat they wanted 241 at a run rate of 4.01 runs per over. Let's join them now. It's the first ball of the innings. Waka Yunis bowls to Paul Terry. Straight away, uh, uh, Waka Yunis getting some lift, hitting uh, Terry on the finger there. Bottom hand. I want to fill in full of confidence. First delivery. I think Terry was more in favour of that single than possibly his partner, Tony Middleton. I'm rather surprised in that uh, Wacker Eunice's space doesn't have a short leg. Would have been a wicket there for him. Best score of the inning so far. There's lift and there's movement. It's flicking the thigh on its way through. Going off the thigh pod there, and the keeper having no chance, and no chance of fine leg nipping around at the pace the ball goes to the boundary. Well, Hampshire getting off at quite a good scoring rate, which was important to them. They didn't get bogged down early on. And the runs have come quite well. Shot. It was a half volley, but uh, still put away pretty well. A bit wide, but uh, well, Middleton got right across there. Some good backing up and uh, 
any hesitation at all, and that would have been the end of Middleton. Yes, it's the non-striker, Tony Middleton, who's backing up and calling. He's off like a shot, and he makes the run there. Did I? Yes, yeah, good cricket all round here. A nice placement of a run for a single past the fielder and good accurate throwing from the fielder. That's a good shot. Shows the lack of pace in the pitch, but even so, Paul Terry was on that like a flash. Yes, Paul Terry's been very patient here, waiting for the ball. It's just half a yard shorter than normal. Well, that's not so good. So the captain uh, will be very unimpressed by that full toss outside leg stump. It just looks as though it's getting away from Surrey at the moment. The cracking stroke. That's been an enormous thrill for this young player. He's playing his first big match on this ground and in front of a capacity crowd of 28,000 people. The big problem for Surrey is that they haven't been able to exert any pressure on the Hampshire batsmen. In between some pretty good balls, I mean, Waka Yunus worked up quite a lot of pace, but there were some easy balls to score off, some bad balls in between a lot of aggression. That just gives momentum to the batting side. is desperation. <laughs> Only one chance in these limited overs games, so desperation is needed, particularly when you haven't already taken a wicket, and that was brilliantly done because he pushed it back, didn't have it in his hands when he went over the line. That was great work, good thinking. Durham University, James Boiling. An easy three there. Beautiful done. That's terrific fielding. Looks to me like one of the most wholehearted cricketers I've seen. I'm not sure about the slide was needed there, but uh, there was certainly a great arm on him. A magnificent return. This can be tight. And out. Well, what a way to get the wicket. Middleton called. Terry perhaps a little slow to respond. Direct hit and was always going to be close, and that is the end of Terry. 90 for one, and we're in the 27th over. Well, Surrey needed a breakthrough, and they got it through absolutely brilliant fielding. There's a way the fielder went for the ball, really. Good innings by Paul Terry, his quick single. Been taking one or two of those, but it was the fielder. He moved so sharply to his right, he was in quick. He picked up the ball quickly, one handed, and let it go. New batsman Robin Smith. There is the young man who's having a splendid match. 
three tight overs here and uh, they're back in business. That's one way to get rid of the pressure and that's a splendid 50 for Middleton. First appearance in this competition. Well, there's a big cheer went up from sections of the crowd. We were no doubt Surrey supporters when they saw Waka Yunis taking off his sweater. Splendid shot. It was a grooved shot. There was no real power to it. It's still worth three. That brings the 100 up, and that's come up in the 29th over for Hampshire compared with the 39th for Surrey. A lovely push drive by Robin Smith. So strong. hung about that's quite a good run rate himself but that's what can happen at the other end with a world-class batsman well we've seen that shot many times this summer no need to run when Robin Smith hits them beautiful shot lovely follow-through No ball. Would no doubt uh, have been a wide as well. It was very fast and it bounced off the thumb. Now David Ward has uh, kept wickets. Stewart will want to keep going. There's uh, no doubt about his courage, but. Just a question of um, whether it's worth doing it. Martin Bicknell and James Boiling, two men to try and get that rate of 5.24 up to six. Best way to do that would be to take wickets with deliveries of that kind. Yes, this was a good delivery from Bicknell. Pitch round about the off stump, went down the hill, moved away off the pitch. It's a very good stroke. Been trying to get uh, the ball through that mid on area. There's nothing really wrong with the ball itself. Well, this is as good a shot as you'll see against the off spin, using his feet. Lovely little chassis movement of the feet, opens himself up and tucks it away. Mid on and mid wicket looked at each other because the placement was perfect. One fifty up, just ninety one to go. Premeditated, quite vicious, perfectly executed. Yes, yeah, a quality shot by a quality batsman. You don't have to give him any room, he's hitting this from length. Just half a yard short of uh, a full length for a spinner, and on a slow surface, he makes room for himself. Just Tony Murphy from the nursery end. the one they wanted, it's the one they had to have. 
A good knock from Tony Middleton. His first NatWest match. And he's played a blind. A 78 in a total of 160 for two. Well, that's a really fine in his by Tony Middleton. The breakthrough eventually came. They've waited a long time for this of Surrey. They've had to work very, very hard. It's a good Yorker right in there to off stump. Tony Middleton giving himself just a little bit of room to hit on the offside. Cars get himself organised. Blew it back in. And Murphy is the bowler. That's a fierce stroke. Well, it really is a cracking cover drive. You don't need to run for these. Just laid back, waited for it, just hit through the line. Didn't really put his foot to the ball, but he hit right through the line of the ball. It's the signal to take apart the opposition. Well, he's just taking the tack here to Surrey. Just whip that away. Last ball of boiling over. I think Gower knew it. Yes, I think there was a bit of experience in this shot. David Gower, from the shot down the pitch, staying leg side, he did it over extra cover. Very clean strike of the ball. Beautifully placed. He senses that he's got to get what he can off the off-spinners, last over. And Murphy has pulled nine overs. Bicknell is coming back now. That's Martin Bicknell. It'll be Bicknell and Wakai Yunus to provide the final burst for Surrey. Last opportunity. Peter Robin Smith. Twice, Martin Bicknell got through Robin Smith in that over. So now. Ten overs to go. Five of them can be bowled by Wakai Yunus. What a shot that is. Well, this is what can happen when you leave your best bowler to the end. The bats were already set. Just stood up there and smacked it through extra cover. Not even bothered about his left foot going to the pitch of the ball. He just stood back and cracked it away. Most times he puts his foot to the ball, plays orthodox shots. Now he's just getting very cocky and confident. He's playing very well. He's not bothering about the feed. He's just making the bat go through the line. That is out. And David Gower playing leg side all across what Umpire Palmer decided was a straight delivery. 192 for three, and we're in the 51st over. There goes David Gower. Replaced by Kevin James. And this delivery from Wacky Yoon is just about holding from off to leg, straightening back on Gower. 
just a little bit and really that's as straightforward an LBW decision as you could ever wish to have. And that is out. Kevin James has waited just for a, something completely different from that. And that is as disappointing a dismissal as you could get. And Robin Smith at the other end now knows that there's a real battle on. The fourth wicket down. Two wickets in four deliveries. Uh, it's a little bit of a tentative push outside off stump. Not really a textbook forward defensive. Great delight for Surrey. New batsman Jonathan Ayling. <laughs> so close. Stewart wasn't sure. A bit of everything in this one. It's seen back and he's played inside it. Great piece of fielding and uh, the pressure mounts. Two balls to the over left. Ailing makes it worth two. Now, how will Surrey set about... That's the 200 up. How will Greg set about trying to deny Robin Smith the single? Murphy isn't the sort of bowler who can bowl a bouncer, as Rekha Yunus did. There are just four men in the circle. Final ball of the over. Well, he didn't try for the single. Well, that was a fabulous shot. Typical Robin Smith through the covers. And we're saying it's poor light and the batsman is struggling. That's true, but so are the fielders. Oh, dear, what a blow that is. Terrific blow, and Ailing threatened him with footwork, made enough room, and what a decisive blow that might turn out to be. Well, it was short, the one thing really that Murphy shouldn't be doing. Ailing just played a crossback shot, and to everybody's surprise, that just disappeared into the crowd. Again, a little chassis with footwork, but uh, this time a more orthodox shot, and again it's forced to misfield. And now, what a costly over this is turning out to be. 13 so far off it. Well, this was bad fielding. All the time in the world to get that. Trouble. And out! Could have run Ailing out instead, a direct hit and caught Smith just short. 231 for five in the end of Robin Smith. He's run out for 78. Great piece of fielding. Yes, it was always going to be a tight run. I think he really got to both going these sessions, but uh, looking for the stumps there and then uh, a tremendous piece of fielding. And definitely out, Robert Smith didn't get the bat down. What an innings he's played. The batsman Adrian Ames. Having played in every Nat West match for Hampshire this year, this is his first innings. What a time to come in. Well, it's less than a run of ball, which normally you're happy with, but uh, a new batsman coming in this now, which is very, very bad light. It uh, looks all right on your screen, but I can assure you it's very dark. Ailing again, he's having a purple patch.
Yes, there was a stumble there about a third of the way through the run. Just a little alter by the non-striker. Enough to take, there he goes. Just the stumble there took all the momentum away. And that puts new batsman Rajesh Maru on strike. That's what he's coming in to do. Well, that could have been the, the whole game, but it wasn't. So very nearly pulled it off. But credit and glory and the trophy to Hampshire. That was really a very good innings by young Tony Middleton playing in his first NatWest Trophy match, 78. And of course, Robin Smith calling on his huge experience to score his runs. I rather like the quirky but invaluable innings of John Ayling towards the end, 80 not out. And they put the bowlers under pressure, no doubt about that. Wacker Eunice, one for 43. Martin Bicknell, excellent bowling, one for 32. But then there's poor Murphy, one for 56. And the 58th over of the innings, 14 runs coming from one of his overs. And so the record stands. Hampshire win by four wickets, but by only two balls. Lord Alexander, chairman of NatWest Bank, has entered the winning captain with his cheque for 26 and a half thousand pounds. Colin Cowdery, formerly of Kent in England, nominated his man of the match as Robin Smith. And so our 1991 season ends almost in the dark here at Lords. <laughs>